In the ancient Mediterranean world of the Bible, birth established everyone's proper place and social status. No one ever expected anybody to become something better than, or to improve upon, the situation of one's parents. This fact is the basic foundation of honor, the public claim to worth, and the public acknowledgement of that value by all others. In the world of the Bible, each child inherits, carries on, and is expected to safeguard the family's honor. The Gospel for this Sunday is Luke chapter 4, verses 21 to 30. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky vaults were closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. In this gospel reading, the Lucan Jesus is perceived by others in his peasant village to be stepping shamefully beyond his family boundaries. This very real historical event that Luke reports, albeit with post-resurrection recontextualizations, augmentation, and elaboration, reflects the cultural tensions this kind of behavior would occasion in any tiny Mediterranean village. In the Mediterranean world of the Bible, it is customary for a son to carry on his grandfather's name and his father's trade. The late John Pilch remembers an Arab merchant from whom he used to purchase carefully designed and colorfully dyed eggs in Bethlehem. When that merchant died, John Pilch, a world-leading expert on the cultural world of the scriptures, was not at all surprised to discover the man's stall and his business still in operation the following year. Sure enough, the merchant's young son continues onward with his father's profession to the present day. The Middle Eastern people in Nazareth, Jesus' Middle Eastern Mediterranean hometown, know him and his family very well. While reducing the townspeople's reaction to Jesus in comparison with Matthew and Mark's version of the story, Luke nevertheless records their amazement. Is not this Joseph's son? The Mediterranean Middle Eastern Jesus stirs up controversy, but why? It is because he does not seem to be carrying on Joseph's trade, a village peasant artisan. What Jesus is doing is something very different, and this constitutes a breach of family honor, generally unacceptable in the Mediterranean world. Now, this man we call Luke, the author of the Gospel called Luke, despite being the most skilled of all New Testament writers, keeps adding rather clumsily to this source of amazement among the peasant villagers. Although intentional, Luke's addition is clumsy because at this point in his gospel, chapter 4, Jesus has not yet even been to Capernaum, nor has he yet healed anybody. Instead of honorably practicing his father's trade, the Luke and Jesus points to two other activities that he prefers. First, the Luke and Jesus proclaims for himself and practices healing activities. This is the focus of his citation of Deuteronomy, Isaiah, Isaiah chapters 40 through 55, specifically chapter 40 verses 3 through 5, which the Luke and Jesus will definitely fulfill in his ministry to follow very shortly in the story Luke is about to spin. 
My friends, our Western 21st century understanding of health and healing is bound inexorably to scientific biomedical views and Western medicine. Thanks to our microscopes, we know of the existence, nature, and functions of germs and bacteria, and viruses, and diseases. More to it, we 21st century Western human beings can do something about these. We can check them, prevent their effects, and even destroy them. But in the ancient Mediterranean world of Jesus and the Bible, nobody knew about germs, viruses, and infectious disease. They were, however, keenly aware that human beings, generally speaking, possess no power over the human experience of illness. So, whenever an extraordinary person like the Lucan Jesus comes along, who seems to have the power to heal, that is, to restore meaning to people's lives, Nearly everybody rejoices and seeks out the healer's help. My friends, in the Mediterranean world, there is a basic rule, and it must be adhered to. You look after your family first. Us Western people would call that nepotism. But in the Mediterranean world of the Bible, it's a virtue. Shockingly, Jesus has broken this important rule in Luke's clumsy storyline. We will read where he heals the sick in Capernaum, but has apparently not healed anybody in his own hometown. You know, it's very insulting to proclaim and preach healing in your own hometown and village where everyone is your first, second, and third cousin blood relative, while going around the countryside like a social deviant healing outsiders elsewhere. Worse yet, Jesus places himself into the prophetic line of Elijah and Elisha. Like these prophets, he ministers not to fellow Judeans, but rather to outsiders, people beyond his circle. By directing his healing activities to these outsiders rather than to those insiders of his hometown, again, very likely blood relatives, is to very grievously transgress against family honor. Is it any wonder that these Middle Eastern blood relative villagers become angered, incensed, and desire to kill Jesus, to murder him? You shouldn't be surprised or shocked at this. Honor in the Mediterranean world is a matter of life and death. It's the only thing that matters. It is so hard for Americans and other Western people to grasp, much less appreciate, the shocking behavior of the Luke and Jesus in this Sunday's Gospel. We Western 21st century people desire and expect that our children will do better than us, their parents. We expect them, while they are still very young, to go out on their own, get their own neo-local residence or apartment, and live as independent human beings, cognitive and emotional universes, separated from all others in individualism. So many of our United States elderly insist, I never want to be a burden on my children. That sentiment captures our American-style freedom that parents wish for their children in the West. How alien. How strange, how very different is the family and village kin of Jesus, the healing prophet.